you. Hello, Internet viewers. I'm your friendly neighborhood Fairly Odd Gamer. With the first Spider-Man movie being a huge hit for both critics and audiences, it's no surprise that a sequel was made. And with the first video game tie-in being a huge success, all right, well, let's just get this over with. It's Spider-Man 2. As I mentioned in the last review, Spider-Man 2 was not only the first Spider-Man movie I ever saw, but it was also my introduction to the Web Slinger as well as Marvel. It was released on June 30th, 2004, almost two years after the release of the first movie. And just like its predecessor, the sequel became a huge success with a total of almost $800 million at the box office and a 93% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. However, on April 27, 2007, after the movie's release, an extended version of the movie entitled Spider-Man 2.1 was released on DVD. I love this movie so much, I actually own the theatrical release as well as the extended 2.1 release on DVD. When I first saw a game trailer on the DVD, I really wanted to play this game. That is until I found out the game was rated T for Teen, which I don't really understand. But after many years, I finally got my hand on Spider-Man 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. Is this game better than the first Spider-Man game? Let's find out. Oh, and while you're at it, grab a slice of pizza. Mmm. Delicious. Like the previous game, it was published by Activision and... Seriously? I just starred this game and it crashes now? Let's try that again. Anyway, it was published by Activision and developed by Treyarch. It immediately was sent to the start screen. No opening cutscene, no demo video, nothing. Also, it's best to point out that the game was released two days before the film's theatrical release. So those who played the game beforehand would more than likely be spoiled. Before we do, let's add in my name. Yes, I happen to be fairly OG myself. You then get a choice between normal swinging for maximum precision and easy swinging which allows you to hold the web swing button and release with automatic swing jumping. Thankfully, you can change your web swing mechanic during the game just to make it easier for you. The game starts off with probably the best rendition of New York City I've ever seen in a video game. Even better than Smashing Drive in my opinion. Plus we get a prologue from Spider-Man, again voiced by Tobey Maguire, as you've probably heard from the game's trailer. This is the city I protect. New York City. It's my home. My playground. My responsibility. Ah, and this is Mary Jane. The girl next door. In case you're wondering, it's the same billboard from the movie. It looks so well done that I can't even tell which one looks better. And in case you couldn't tell, Spider-Man falls in love with Mary Jane. Fate handed me amazing powers, and I made a promise to use those powers to help people. With great power comes great responsibility. No matter how much I might wish things were different, there's only one Spider-Man. This leads to the first level, or chapter if you will, what might have been. Well, sequel time already, huh? Welcome back, I guess. I'm sure you miss me more than I miss you. And yes, Bruce Campbell is back in this game as, once again, the tour guide for this game. If you thought Campbell was hilarious in the previous game, he's even more hilarious in this game with more comedic quirks and gags. Though you can't skip the tutorial and move right into the campaign, it's still best to know the basic controls of this game. The overall gameplay has changed a whole lot from its predecessor, whether for better or worse. For starters, you have to hold X while running into a wall to stick into it, whether it's for climbing or running on walls, unlike in the previous game, where you automatically stick to a wall if you run into it. There's also a jump meter in which you hold the jump button to maximize your jump height. But the thing is, you won't be able to jump until you let go of the jump button. If you tap the jump button, you'll just do a little hop. A little, a little hop. That's because you didn't charge your jump. Am I going too fast for you? However, there is one thing that I personally like better here than the previous game. 
Instead of using a compass and height meter, you have a map and a destination marker that shows you exactly where you need to go. What makes this better is not only the color-coded dots, but also showing the height with a connected line to that colored dot. It actually makes this much easier for you. There are also green help icons that give you more helpful advice from Bruce Campbell, which are scattered around the city. Anyway, you reach your destination marker and immediately start the next chapter, A Day in the Life. Not to be confused with a certain Beatles song. Those words zipping by under the chapter title are the items on your to-do list. So get busy. Bruce Campbell then tells Spider-Man to jump off the building. I mean, it's just jump. Wait, what? Hey, I wouldn't tell you to do something dangerous and life-threatening, would I? Well, knowing what movies you've done over the years, I'm pretty sure you would. Nah, you're quickly shown how to web-swing in this game by holding right, R. Right. However, in this game, you can only web-swing if your web can stick onto something, like a building or whatnot. Plus, you can either let go of your webbing, or jump and shoot another web to swing on. Out of all the changes from the previous game, the best change is definitely having Spider-Man walk on the streets of New York, unlike in the previous game where falling from a certain height causes an instant game over. But you can still take fall damage, so keep an eye out for that. Another thing to point out is that unlike the previous game where you can find to one area of New York, you're allowed to roam wherever you like, whether by land or by air. So already this game is a step up from the previous game. Anyway, swing around for a while, only to be stopped by a robbery at the arcade. Usually in a car chase mission like this, you have to punch the car multiple times while dodging bullet shots. However, in this mission, jumping onto the car causes it to stop and the robbers escape. But not unless I have something to show them. Oh yeah, let's give these guys a piece of my mind. You can beat up criminals with the attack button, but you also have multiple combos at your disposal, whether physical or involvement with weapons. These danger icons are the enemies you have to defeat, and they're also used as health meters. Like the previous game, you have a camera lock feature. You might not use it for the majority of the game, but it only depends on what you're more comfortable with. After beating up all the criminals, you're then rewarded with a health icon that brings you back to full health. It's also a level where you're introduced to the Spidey Store, in which you can purchase upgrades as well as more combo attacks and some extra goodies you might need. Oh, and before I forget, these hero points are your currency for this game and you need them to purchase these items. Just purchase a swing speed upgrade and your training will be complete. The city's been quiet lately. Maybe my luck's finally changing. The Spider-Man swings around New York City and... <laughs> Not again! Oh well, time to reset my GameCube again. The city's been quiet lately. Maybe my luck's finally changing. My luck's finally changing. <laughs> crash on me twice, but now the auto's out of sync after it glitches. Well, there's only one thing I can do now. Internet footage! As Spider-Man swings around the city and jump on top of rooftops, we introduce to Dr. Otto Octavius, thankfully reprised by Alfred Molina from the movie. He shows his wife Rosie his greatest gift to the world. Unlimited energy. The power of a sun harnessed for the good of all mankind. Don't forget the good of Otto. Eat something. The world will still be here in half an hour. This leads to the next chapter, Punctuality is the Thief of Time. Before moving on, it's probably best to save your game. You can easily do that by pausing the game and moving over to your save load screen. There are also these white markers that are required for the chapter, but not something you need to do right away. Anyway, Spider-Man finds out that he's late for Dr. Connor's class, so that's where he goes next. But then... Help me! Ugh, right on cue. I was almost there, too. I'm sorry, Dr. Connors. He finds an officer who tells him to not let these criminals get the briefcase stolen from an innocent woman. While fighting criminals, you can dodge and counterattack once your head glows, sort of like Spire Sense, as well as a new feature called Spire Reflexes, which you can activate by pressing up on the control pad. I love using Spire Reflexes because not only will you move faster than the bad guys, but you can also land more damaging blows, therefore making the combat easier for you. Oh, and you see that blue meter underneath your health meter? That's your reflex meter. You can fill up the meter by dodging, beating up criminals, and even performing some stylish tricks. So whenever you can, please use Spider Reflex Mode as much as possible. One more thing. If you come across an enemy that deflects any of your main attacks, then try webbing them, or better yet use your web yank for better combat. 
So Spider-Man gives the briefcase back to the woman as he makes his way to class, only to find out that he missed class. Not only does Dr. Connors inform Peter that he's failing class, but he also reminds Peter to write his paper about Dr. Octavius. Which you haven't even started. I'll pull things together. I promise. I hope so. I'll see you in class. There are also missions that require you to earn a certain amount of hero points. You can earn hero points by defeating criminals, rescuing citizens, whether hanging from a building, taking them to the hospital, or drowning from a boat. Plus, you earn hero points by retrieving a lost balloon to a kid. But this is also the chapter that introduces the pizza delivery missions. You know what that means. Pizza time. You see that yellow reverse token? That token allows you to change clothes into Peter. Before each mission, Peter gets scolded by Mr. Aziz for being late, like in the movie. But Peter has no choice but to deliver the pizzas on time and back. While delivering the pizzas, it's best to not perform any tricks, otherwise you'll be ruining the pizza. Once you make the deliveries, then hurry back to the pizza parlor and you'll be able to receive more hero points. But why are these missions so memorable? That's why. Anytime you hear this music, you'll immediately picture Spider-Man delivering you a pizza. Just insert this music to the scene from the movie and call it a day. In fact, I'll step it up a notch. How about playing this music for basically any Spider-Man meme that involves the Raimi trilogy. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Spider Memes with Fitting Music. <laughs> That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? Avenge me! If you want forgiveness, get religion. I missed the part where that's my problem. Memes galore! <laughs> However, if you fail a hero mission, then you'll lose hero points. So try to complete as many hero missions as possible. There are also these challenge markers that allow you to complete a challenge in the fastest time possible, such as flying through swing rings and climbing to the top of a tower. After completing a few hero missions, Spider-Man then remembers about tonight's meeting with Mary Jane and Harry. Why you ask? Because it's Peter's birthday. Now I've got good news and bad news. The good news is they managed to get Kirsten Dunst to reprise Mary Jane from the movie. The bad news is they still couldn't get James Franco to reprise Harry Osborn. So it's once again voiced by Josh Keaton. Again, I don't have a problem with that. It turns out they had a bet on whether or not Peter would actually show up. I'm almost afraid to ask, but who won the bet? I did, of course. Okay, Harry, pay up. <laughs> all right, all right. Are you sleeping all right, Pete? You look beat. Just some late nights. Still palling around with that murdering bug? Harry. I know you think Spider-Man killed your dad. He did kill my dad. Someday I'll get him for it, too. Yeah, apparently Harry has a vendetta against Spider-Man thinking he killed Norman Osborn, which we kind of knew already from the previous movie. And since the last film, MJ has her own billboards, like the one we saw already, and a play, which, according to the movie, is the importance of being earnest. Plus, Harry becomes the head of Oscorp and is applying Tritium from Dr. Octavius. Speaking of which, Harry asks Peter to meet him, which he happily agrees to. Anyway, do some more hero work as well as interact with some of the locals. Eventually, he'll remember about meeting MJ later that evening. MJ gets Peter a ticket to her play as he tells Peter the big news. I'm seeing someone now. A guy. We'll find out more about him later. Peter gets distracted by thugs at the art museum, whom Spider-Man defeats. He then finds another woman, this time with white hair and dressed in all black. This leads to having Spider-Man chase after the woman. That's right. The chase levels from the previous game are back, proximity meter and all. But unlike the previous game, you actually have a trail that guides you to where she is. However, if you fail to catch up to her, you lose the mission. But look on the bright side. You do get to start again from where you last left off, unlike the previous game, where you had to start again from the beginning of the level. This alone makes it much more forgiving. Eventually, you do catch up to her on the rooftop. You always chase girls who brush you off? No, only the naughty ones. I have standards, after all. Standard is the word. And here I was expecting... amazing. Well, he is the amazing Spider-Man for a reason. 
The woman in black gets away as we head to the next chapter, All in a Day's Work. This is a chapter that introduces missions that involve the Daily Bugle, where Spider-Man works as a photographer. Hi Pete, pictures for the boss? Actually, I'm hoping he might have an assignment for me. Well, he's in a pretty good mood today. Maybe you'll get lucky. Go ahead in. Jameson finds out that a guy named Quentin Beck already has Spider-Man figured out. But it turns out that Parker doesn't have any photos of Spider-Man. As a result, Jameson fires Parker for the third time this week until he gets more photos of Spider-Man. Luckily, Robbie has an assignment for Peter which involves, you guessed it, taking photos of the city. And that's exactly what he does. Send the photos over to Jameson and the chapter ends, right? Explosion. Better check it out. It turns out the explosion came from another villain from the Spider-Man series, Rhino. Spider-Man, huh? Finally! I've been dying to see what you can do! Is it just me, or does Rhino sound like Bender from Futurama had he been on steroids? <laughs> and nasal congestion. Anyway, Rhino is the first boss of the game. All you have to do is avoid his dash and rotary battery ram attacks until he gets dizzy. And then beat the living crud out of him. Eventually, Spider-Man defeats Rhino and hangs him up for the police to investigate. On to the next chapter, A Meeting of the Minds. Just make your way to Octavius' apartment where you meet up with Harry as well as Octavius himself. I just want to take a moment right now to say that Octavius' in-game model looks much better than his FMV model. Why? Because it looks more like Alfred Molina. His FMV model looks more like Peter's landlord from the movie. You know, the guy who wants Peter to pay the rent. In fact, the in-game models from most of the characters look much better than the FMV models in my opinion. The FMV model makes them look, well, older. And I don't think they look right, but that's just me. Anyway, Octavius shows Peter and Harry his greatest creation. In the works, of course. Sustained fusion has never been possible before. Why? Once the reaction reaches a certain point, it becomes impossible to contain and control it. Exactly. Until now. Using tritium in the core, provided exclusively by Oscorp. Yes, of course. As I was saying, tritium in the core lends the reaction more stability. And these arms are the key. Amazing. The discussion is cut short, but at least they're nice enough to invite them over for dinner later tonight. And that's pretty much it. Moving on to the next chapter, Cat and Mouse. Bruce Campbell lays out five photo op tokens to collect, which doesn't require you to take any photos. Suddenly an alarm sounds at a jewelry store, and who would show up but that woman in black we saw before. Once again, you chase after her, thinking she was the culprit behind the theft, only to have her deny said theft. Anyway, it turns out the woman in black is actually Black Cat. Think of her as Marvel's answer to Catwoman. After the encounter, Peter finds out that he's late, as always, as both he and Mary Jane hope to see a movie together. It then leads to one of these missions where he has to reach a destination under a time limit. But luckily, he does make it in time. After collecting more hero points, it transitions to the next chapter, Pride and Prejudice. Spider-Man makes his way to the Daily Bugle as Jameson informs Peter that Beck has publicly challenged Spider-Man to prove he's a fake, and he has to be at the sports arena to take photos. Pretty sure he means Madison Square Garden, right? Anyway, with a crowd capacity of... cardboard cutouts? We're introduced to Quentin Beck, a Hollywood special effects artist. To prove Spider-Man's broadness, Beck sets up a series of challenges, and your first challenge is to round up more criminals than Beck by dropping them into the green zones earning you a point. However, these zones will change, so keep an eye out for that. Instead of beating them up, you have to grapple them with your web and throw them into each zone. But who are these criminals, you ask? According to the press release, the city's Department of Corrections provided the criminals Beck and Spidey will be collecting. Right, Steve. And virtually every one of these convicted criminals is someone Spider-Man helped capture, including one celebrity criminal, Herman Schulz, a.k.a. The Shocker. SHOCKER! Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyway, both Spider-Man and Beck have to round up three waves of criminals. Once you know how to use the web grapple, you've pretty much nailed the challenge. However, Beck has one more challenge in which Spider-Man must face. An obstacle course in which Spider-Man has to press multiple switches and reach the end. Easy, right? Well, try doing that while Beck fires a non-lethal electric cannon. If you somehow get hit three times, you lose. The obstacle course is pretty much a test of timing in which you run and or wall climb from one switch to another. It's pretty easy until you reach this part where you have to jump across to the real switch, and you'll more than likely get hit by Beck's cannon here. But it's still easy regardless. Not taking his loss very well, 
Spec tries to kill him by setting his laser cannon to maximum power. The only downside is that the laser overheats and therefore doesn't work. Problems with your laser, Beck? I hear there are pills for that now. Spider-Man leaves the arena, leaving Beck humiliated. He shouldn't have won. All the work. The obstacle course, yes, the obstacle course was good. Oh, the electric cannon, the electric cannon. Why, why? Hey, Bob! Bob, what happened to... Oh, there we go. I don't know why Bob's head shrunk when his body moved closer, but man, that looks terrifying. Anyway, next chapter, Sugar and Spice. Spider-Man once again makes his way to Octavius' apartment as they continue their discussion about the fusion reactor. While the discussion cuts short, they actually continue the discussion over dinner, which you can see in the movie. However, he remembers Mary Jane's plight, and that's where he heads to next. Looks like he might be able to head there in time. That is until some robbers blow up a building. Being the superhero you are, you have to defeat them first. Oh, and take care of that sniper guy too. He can pack in a lot of damage with every shot. But it's not over yet. You also have to break down the truck and beat up more bad guys, and then you make your way to MJ's play. Unfortunately, you arrive just when her play ends. Or her being surprised by her boyfriend. John Jameson. Wait, who? My son, the astronaut. Oh yeah, apparently this is the guy that MJ was talking about earlier. But suddenly, Black Cat appears again. Remember those thugs that Spidey fought at the art museum? Well, it turns out Black Cat found their secret hideout. So what happens next? Chase her around the city, of course. But in this case, you have to follow her not once, but twice. Eventually, they make it to the hideout as they both defeat the thugs. After finishing them off, Black Cat is gone and presumably takes the statue. Well, she did like the statue after all. Let's move on to the next chapter, when aliens attack. Spider-Man heads over to the Daily Bugle as Jameson tells Peter that Beck is having a news conference, which Jameson wants photos of. Another one? But didn't Spider-Man pass his tests? They were rigged! Get down there, now! Well, at least Jake Gordon is trying to sound like J.K. Simmons, even though Simmons does voice him in the PC version. While at the news conference, an alien-like figure known as Mysterio claims that Earth is a great place to take over. They laugh and ridicule him, but Mysterio gets the last laugh on them by sending out alien minions to attack everyone. Spider-Man quickly makes his way to the news conference, only to find people in danger as well as Mysterio. Mysterio? I think I had a bowl of Mysterios for breakfast. Ha ha, very funny. All you have to do is save the news reporters and destroy all the robot alien minions. They look somewhat similar to the Hunter Codes from the previous game, but at least they're more forgiving. At least you can punch them while in midair. Oh, and be sure to neither touch nor web swing toward lava because it results in health depletion. And one more thing, not only is Mysterio a hologram, but he's also known for quoting pop culture references. You could say that he quoted the day the earth stood still, but clearly he referenced the Necronomicon from Army of Darkness, another movie directed by Sam Raimi. Klaatu, Mirada, <laughs> so after saving all the reporters and defeating all the robots, Mysterio and his armada are in progress of taking over. Their first target, the Statue of Liberty. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. Did Mysterio just quote cats from Zero Wing? For those who don't know, it's the one game on the Sega Genesis with the infamous mistranslation, All Your Base Are Belong To Us. So apparently Mysterio has to quote movies and or memes that involve aliens. I wonder what other alien memes will be quoted in this game. Where? So Spider-Man makes his way to the Statue of Liberty where he then finds a UFO invasion. Just like that one movie, Independence Day. But truth be told, I can't even stand this part for the life of me. You have to web swing to the island via spaceships. If you somehow fall into the water, then you have to start all over again. So hope you get a high enough swing speed upgrade to make your way to Liberty Island. Eventually you'll find a giant brain being the source of Mysterio's trick. Thankfully if you're close to the island and you fall into the water, you then swim back to the island. Anyway, you have to destroy 8 shield orbs before attacking the giant brain with eyes. But don't waste too much time against the brain because the orbs will reappear, making you destroy them again. You see why I hate this mission? So after finally defeating the giant brain, the statue returns to normal with no way to get back. Except for a random boat ride. So where is Mysterio's hidden fortress you may ask? Why, his apartment of course. But there's more to it as Spider-Man finds an elevator behind a bookcase leading him to his so-called Funhouse of Doom. It's here where we're introduced to a new enemy, Mr. Hoppenhack. 
They're bouncy, axe-wielding clowns that are easy to dodge and attack if you time it just right. Once it's destroyed, you enter the funhouse of doom only to be flipped upside down. Literally. Destroy some more Hoffman hacks as you enter the next room, the Hall of Mirrors. But everything is not what it seems because your reflections come out of the mirrors and they attack you. So not only do you have to defeat strange clones of yourself, but you also have to break the mirrors because one of them leads to the exit. Eventually he makes his way to the control room where you finally find Mysterio. And by that I mean another hologram of Mysterio. So what's next on your agenda? Get out of this crazy place! This leads to the next chapter, When Good Men Go Bad. Purchase the latest swing speed upgrade and gather some hero points. Eventually you'll remember Octavius' demonstration as he yet again makes his way to Octavius' apartment. Even with the character models not looking like the actors, the cutscene still does a pretty good job of replicating this very scene from the movie. You know, the one where Octavius operates the mechanical arms, starting off the experiment, and something goes horribly wrong. How wrong? Well, the swamp magnetic field drops a lamp on Mr. Wilhelm, <laughs> destroying his lab and killing his wife in the process. But no need to worry because Fireman is here to save the day. While this action is difficult, it's not as hard as the giant brain mission from the previous chapter. You think that destroying four panels is easy, right? Well, try doing that while the sun's energy field fluctuates rapidly and therefore giving you less time to react. What's even worse is that you also have to dodge bolts of energy, which can also strike at any point, so keep an eye out for your spidey sense. After destroying the four panels, Spider-Man hears an ambulance and immediately evacuates, knowing that he'll be blamed for this. So he collects more hero points and he'll eventually remember that he has to see Dr. Connors again, and that's where he goes to next. However, then gets interrupted by... an alien invasion? Yep, Mysterio's robots are back and you have to destroy all of them. While at the university, Octavius beats up Dr. Connors thinking he's being turned in. Well, even that Spider-Man was the cause of pretty much everything that happened, he decides to rebuild the machine and kill Spider-Man to avenge poor Rosie. But there's one small problem. I need money. Need to rebuild. Enlarge the containment field. Make it bigger and stronger than ever. Peter finds Dr. Connors, only now he's brutally injured. Otto. No! Having no idea what's going on, he decides to drop a visit by the Daily Bugle. Octavius! Four extra arms! Dr. Octopus! Or as most of us call him, Doc Ock. It turns out Doc Ock went berserk, killed the doctors that tried to help him, and escaped from the hospital. And yes, I'm using clips from the movie for visual reference alone. Exiting the Daily Bugle leads to the next chapter, The Underworld of Crime. Spider-Man heads over to the bank to meet her Aunt May as she tries to get alone. Unfortunately, she can't because suddenly Doc Ock appears. Also, did Doc Ock ever have goons in the movie? Because I'm pretty sure he never did. Peter, where are you going? Your boy is quite the hero. Thanks for spoiling that dandy as Spider-Man, banker. Speaking of which, it's best to fight off Doc Ock's goons before fighting Doc Ock himself. Before attacking him though, he has to dodge and web his claws at the right time. Then you can attack him until his arms are free. You don't necessarily need to do that, but it'll make the boss fight much easier for you. Doc Ock takes Aunt May hostage, leaving you with more goons to defeat. Once that's done, he goes after a helicopter holding both Doc Ock and Aunt May. Just hang on to the helicopter until they reach the train tracks, where Doc Ock leaves Aunt May to die. But luckily Spider-Man comes in to save Aunt May from this treacherous peril. Oh, and by the way, this is the only time we see Aunt May in this game. On to the next chapter, Shocking Developments. Spider-Man makes his way to his apartment as he gets a message from Jameson telling him to get to his son's charity and take photos. Once you get there, you hear that Mary Jane is going to marry John Jameson. But don't worry, Spider-Man. Black Cat is here to cheer you up. It turns out Black Cat gave the stolen statue to the cops as she figures out why Spider-Man is still trying to chase Mary Jane. Normal is boring. Normal is half my life. At least it's supposed to be. Why? I mean, seriously. Why settle for being some schmo when you can be a superstar? That's a good question, actually. Anyway, she tells Spider-Man about Shocker. Shocker! Again, couldn't resist. Not only did he escape from prison after Spidey's fiasco with Beck, but also Black Cat managed to find Shocker's hideout and she thinks kicking Shocker's buttocks will cheer him up. This leads to, yet again, chasing after Black Cat. You pretty much know the drill by now. Anyway, they arrive at Shocker's hideout only to find, you guessed it, Shocker! 
Though the battle against Soccer is pretty easy, it's probably best to use your camera lock feature. Soccer can shoot electric bolts which are pretty easy to dodge, as well as an explosion attack that can easily be avoided if you manage to perfect the Joestar's secret technique. Black Hat helps you out in the fight only to stop once his men shows up. But keep your focus on Shocker and let her take care of the goons. Also, it's best to point out that Shocker can jump around and not stay in one location. Just punch and kick away until you defeat Shocker. But he doesn't leave until he cheap shots Black Hat. Thankfully she's alright for now and she too decides to split. Moving on to the next chapter, Cleaning the Slate. Byron heads over to the Daily Bugle as Jameson tells Peter that a diapole is coming in by helicopter and a picture is needed. So that's what he does, but suddenly... Help! Martians are robbing the Speedy Mart! Well, it looks like Spider-Man has to go to the Speedy Mart where he finds the culprit behind the robbery, Mysterio. As he encounters a shop owner... Sure, Space Dude, whatever you say, just don't disintegrate me or whatever. Voiced by Hux Gamer, apparently. Hey dude, you need me for anything? Oh hey Hux, I was wondering if you ever ran a Speed Mart before. Well, not necessarily, but I did sell surfboards at a surf shop once. Oh nice! But did you come across any aliens at all? I did see some strange characters, but not like this. Oh, I see. So how's Spider-Man Month coming along? So far so good. I'm about to do battle against Mysterio. That's awesome, gamer! Hope you do well. Thanks, Hux. As I was saying, Spider-Man now has to fight Mysterio, which will be difficult seeing that he now has three health bars. So let's see how difficult this boss battle is. Oh. Well, that was bogus. Yeah, it really was pointless the more I think about it. That's alright. Anyway, I just want to see what's up. Later, dude! It turns out Mysterio is actually Quentin Beck, no duh, as Spider-Man takes the photo and hands it over to Jameson. So, Beck and Spider-Man were in cahoots all along. How can you look at those pictures and say that? I don't have time for your moral outrage, Parker. I'm trying to run a paper here and make sure my son's wedding to Jean Marie doesn't bankrupt me. Her name is Mary Jane. Yeah, right, right. Anyway, a woman shouts for help, but she thinks you're going to hurt her. Wait, seriously? So now Spider-Man has to head back to the Daily Bugle and give the publisher a piece of his mind, only to be cut off by Black Cat. Again. Spider-Man has been sick and tired of having the Daily Bugle ruin his reputation, but at least Black Cat talks some sense into him. Well, it's a good thing Black Cat is trying to help Spidey out on his anger issues, at least. Anyway, she tells Spider-Man that she found Shocker again as she tries to... Ugh. Once again, follow and catch up to Black Cat. Those keeping track at home, Spider-Man has followed Black Cat six times so far. And none of them are any different, until now that is. You're stopped by Soccer's men along the way, and you have to fight them on top of two different rooftops, with the help of Black Cat, of course. Eventually, you end up in an illegal weapons trade, and it's here where you find... Shocker! This time, he has a shield equipped preventing you from attacking him. While Spider-Man swings around in circles, Black Cat finds a way to stop the shield. When she does, you have to head over to the panel opposite from her, punch the panel, and the shield will turn off. It's pretty much the same thing from last time. Punch and kick away while avoiding Shocker's attacks, and once again perfecting the Joestar secret technique. However, Shocker can activate his shield up to three times, which means both Black Hat and Spider-Man have to deactivate the shield three times. Once Black Cat shuts down the shield for good, you'll then defeat Shocker as Black Cat heads out. She's pretty amazing, don't you think, Shock? <sighs> I think my career has just hit a new low. Ah, uh, who cares what you think? Next chapter, Burning Bridges. Spider-Man once again remembers Mary Jane's play, in which you only have five minutes to make it there. With nothing distracting him right now, maybe he can finally make it after all. Wait, he missed it again? There are no criminals, no robots, Nothing that could possibly stop him, all with time to spare, and he still missed the play? Oh, never mind, there's a criminal. Give me your money! Leave me alone! Spider Man defeats the goons as Mary Jane tells him that she's getting married. Fearing that Mary Jane might know Spider Man's identity, he takes off feeling like a fool. Luckily, he remembers that he's supposed to meet with Black Cat. Knowing that there might be something going on at the warehouse, Black Cat asks Spider Man to race him to the warehouse. I heard that winning the race earns you more hero points, but you don't necessarily need to win the race in order to move on. 
At the warehouse, a bunch of bad guys are selling robots, but Black Cat jumps down and starts a fight. In my opinion, this fight is probably the most difficult fight in the entire game. Not only do you have a bunch of guys to beat up, but they also have armor robots with homing missiles. Even though Black Cat will help you out in battle, you still need to have godlike reflexes to defeat these guys. So B should have camera lock on and use your spy reflexes wisely. Otherwise, they will gun you down and possibly lead to your death. Eventually, you defeat the bad guys, but unfortunately, it leaves Spider-Man in a pickle as to whether Black Cat was right or not. Do I really have to give up Peter Parker to be Spider-Man? What about the people in my life? How would they feel? It isn't like anyone ever sees me now. <laughs> MJ. Harry. Aunt May. No matter how hard it is, I can't abandon my friends. So, what, do I quit being Spider-Man? Well, you did in both the movie and the comic, so... Who knows? So after thinking about his life, Spider-Man decides to see Black Cat again. We need to talk. Um? <laughs> okay. Talk then. I just finally realized something. I'm not like you. I can't live the life that you do. My powers came with a responsibility and I need the balance of a normal life. Being Spider-Man is who I am, but being just me, that's who I am too. They decide to still be friends and she lets Spider-Man go. Also, we never see Black Cat again after that. After figuring out he could be both Peter Parker and Spider-Man and balance the two together, he makes his way to Mary Jane's apartment as he tells Mary Jane what's been going on with his life lately. Unfortunately, to no avail. At least it can't get any worse, right? Actually, it does. Doc Ock barges into Harry's office with a tritium, but on one condition. You see, both Harry and Doc Ock lost someone they loved because of Spider-Man. Harry promises Doc Ock that if Doc Ock brings Spider-Man to him alive, then Doc Ock can have the tritium. And of course, Doc Ock agrees. This leads to the final chapter of the game, to save the city. Spider-Man makes his way to his apartment as he gets a message from Mary Jane telling him to meet her at the diner, which he has to get to before time runs out. He arrives at the diner, but suddenly we get another brilliantly replicated scene from the movie via in-game graphics. Peter Parker. And the girlfriend. Pass a message along for me. If you ever want to see this girl alive again, Tell your photogenic arachnid friend that he will meet me alone at the Enric Towers, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Doc Ock now takes Mary Jane hostage as Spider-Man makes his way to the designated location. Apparently Mary Jane is kept somewhere else as Spider-Man makes his way to the train where he once again fights Doc Ock head on. While it's pretty much the same thing you did at the bank, you also have the added sounds of trying not to fall off the train. Other than that, it's pretty easy. And just like the movie, Spider-Man stops the train only to be knocked out by Doc Ock and brought to Harry. Doc Ock gets his tritium as Harry gets his revenge. Harry pulls out the mask and it's revealed that Peter Parker was Spider-Man the whole time. Peter asks Harry where Doc Ock is knowing that he has Mary Jane. So Harry, where is Doc Ock at? He has a lab that he set up on an abandoned pier. She's probably there. And that's exactly where Spider-Man is heading towards. But you better be quick because you only have 55 seconds to get there. I actually had some trouble with this one for some time, but I eventually managed to make it. Spider-Man tries to rescue Mary Jane, but gets stopped by Doc Ock. And like Harry, Mary Jane is also shocked to see that Spider-Man was Peter. However, Doc Ock doesn't take the reveal very kindly. You've been sabotaging me all along. You killed my Rosie. I'm going to kill the woman you love, and then I'm going to kill you. No one else is going to die. This ends now. Indeed it does. So Spider-Man has to stop the machine by destroying nine panels. However, it's not as easy as you think because not only will Doc Ock try to attack you, but you once again have to avoid the energy field as well as bolts of lightning like before. While some of them are pretty obvious to find whether on each corner or below you, others are actually pretty difficult. One is up on the wall where you start the level which requires you to wall climb, and the other being underneath the floor in which you jump down to the hole in the floor and wall climb to the panel. And one more thing, try not to fall into the water. If you do, it's an automatic game over. Eventually you turn off all the generators. And the result? Well, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that the fusion reactor doesn't turn off, unlike the last time. 
The good news is, Doc Ock's shield is gone, which leads to the final battle against Doc Ock. It's similar to the other ones, except now Doc Ock is a bit faster. Whenever you can, be sure to use your spidey reflexes. As mentioned before, it will make the game much easier for you. And if you die here, you reset the battle in full health. Thank goodness for that. After a few more hits, Doc Ock is defeated once and for all. Doc Ock regains control over his mind as he figures out what to do to stop the fusion reactor. Get the young lady out. I'm sorry, Peter. You weren't to blame for the accident. My hubris, my vanity cost Rosie her life. Now I must set things right. Spider-Man saves Mary Jane and escapes as Doc Ock sacrifices his life to permanently destroy the fusion reactor. But don't worry, we'll see him again in Spider-Man No Way Home. Peter apologizes to Mary Jane and tells him that she should be with John as he lets her go. Come on in. It's open. Come on in. It's open. Wait, it's glitching out again? So far this is the fourth time the game glitched, and only the second time the audio went out of sync. Not to mention this is the very last cutscene of all things. Well, you know what that means. On the internet footage! <laughs> anyway, Peter gets an unexpected visit from Mary Jane, who tells Peter that he no longer loves John Jameson, and instead wants to offer her full support to Spider-Man. Go get him, Tiger. With his confidence renewed, Spider-Man continues to defend New York City from evil. After all, there's still only one. Spider-Man. The game ends with two performances from the Distillers, Spider-Man's theme and Beat Your Heart Out, which I will not play due to copyright. Anyway, you do unlock another chapter called The First Day of the Rest of Your Life, in which you complete more side missions in order to collect 50,000 total hero points. Unfortunately, I will not be doing that because I don't have the time for it. So is the Spider-Man 2 tie-in game better than the previous game? Absolutely. It's one of the best, if not the best, Spider-Man game I've ever played so far. Not to mention, it has almost everything that I love from a tie-in game. The main actors reprising the roles from the movie, and scenes from the movie that are replicated beautifully, whether in-game cutscenes or FMV. On a graphical standpoint, it looks better than the previous game. The developers did a fantastic job of turning New York City into a video game world. Plus, the level design is amazing, especially the fun House of Doom level. As for the character models, I personally think Spider-Man's in-game model looks off, while his FMV model looks more like the movie. I feel like his in-game model has too much muscle, but maybe he was trying to be like the comic book. And it's strange because all the other character models, including Peter, have a better resemblance to the actors in the FMV models, especially Doc Ock, Harry Osborn, and even Mary Jane. In regards to the overall gameplay, I personally think it feels much better here because it makes me feel like I'm swinging a web, like the Web Slinger. I love beating up bad guys with physical attacks, and the added bonus of spider reflexes makes the overall combat much easier for me. The addition of the map and destination markers are much better than using a simple compass and height meter. I also enjoy some of the side missions such as delivering pizzas, the time challenges, and even ones where you help civilians because these missions alone can make you a true hero. While there are a few missions that I don't really like that much, primarily the giant brain mission, I don't think it affects my experience in any way, shape, or form. The music in this game is pretty good as well, as it once again uses Danny Elfman vibes, which once again is done very well by Michael McCoyston. The downside is that the majority of the music in this game is not as memorable as the first game, but mainly because I played the first game more. Overall, Spider-Man 2 is a fantastic tie-in game, and I would definitely recommend this game to any Spider-Man fan looking for a good game in which you can explore New York however you want. Give it a try when you get a chance. But it's not over yet. There's still one more game to cover before the month is done. And even then, I don't know if it'll still be March by the time it goes up. So tune in next time when we finish out the month with Spider-Man 3. I'm your friendly neighborhood fairly odd gamer, and I wish you all good luck for the rest of your day or night, wherever you are. Take care, everyone. How's it going, dudes? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to get notified for upcoming videos. Also, be sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as my character buddies on TikTok and Video Commissions. Links to those in the description below. Speaking of character buddies, here's one of them right now to finish out the video. Hey,